This feels very old Hollywood to me. What do you think? Let's take a second to talk about this old Hollywood blanket that I have here. And I'm calling it the old Hollywood blanket because of the use of the gold and the cream colors within the blanket. It just has this very sophisticated, royal kind of feel to it that reminds me of old Hollywood. Very elegant in look. Oh my gosh, and it's so, so comfy cozy. You're gonna love this, guys. You really will. I wanted to just create something that had a little more elegance in my living space. I've been doing a lot of uh, bolds and fun and playful kind of things, but similar to my pillow that I created, I really like having this kind of vibe around me and in my surroundings. Don't think that you're stuck with these colors. You can always change the colors if you want to, but it brought the vibe that I was really really looking for and I just absolutely adore it. So the level of this crochet project for the old Hollywood crochet blanket is an absolute beginner friendly blanket. We're just using the crunch stitch guys. That's it to make this blanket. The big thing though is going to be my color change rows. I tried to be very strategic in where I changed my colors. Empty space, I guess you could say with the cream color to really help accentuate those bold bars in the middle. Now, for my blanket projects, I always try to make sure that I supply you with a chart so that way you can create whatever blanket you want to make with my patterns. So in the pattern itself, you'll be able to find all of the different blanket sizes and I broke it down to the number of chains in the foundation row, the number of rows you're gonna need for the entire blanket. I even broke down every single blanket what row you would do the color change on to get the pattern that I created. Yeah, and on top of that, I even went a step further and I figured out the math for how much how many yards of yarn you're going to need to accomplish this project. And even if you really want to know if you're able to get your hands on the exact yarn that I am using in this project, I broke down how many skeins of each color you will need to purchase to create your blanket. So tried to really help you out there. On top of that, I did diagrams and charts color coded so that way I'm really trying to help you figure out how to do the color changes and where to do the color changes and all that fun stuff. All right, so the, in the pattern, the terminology, and even in this video, the terminology I am using for all of my stitches is all US terminology. The dimensions of this very blanket, I wanted to make a big blanket in this regard. Now it's not quite the dimensions of a large throw blanket, but it's close. This blanket that I have right here is, it measures 50 inches wide. Here we go. It's a big blanket. Okay, so 50 inches wide. So if I lay it on my lap, this is, and this is me, by 65 inches long. So if I turn it sideways, this is kind of a blanket that you want to turn sideways to use because look at this. Okay, so, and pinch, repinching, reshuffling. Look at that. I could easily fit like three bodies Oh. <laughs> Underneath this blanket, look how long this is. Oh. There we go. Yeah, see, and I have like still this much room over here on this side. We're ready to go. <laughs> so that's my blanket, but I, this isn't quite the large throw. I went ahead and gave you all of the exact dimensions and the exact amount of yarn you're going to need for the large throw blanket, the small throw blanket, that's all in the pattern. And you can find the pattern in the description section and comment section below this video. I will put a link there that'll take you to my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, where you can purchase the pattern, print it out, and be ready to crochet with me. Or you can just follow along with me in the video, though you're not gonna know where to do color changes. If you feel confident to figure that out for yourself, you got it, go for it. But in the pattern, I'm, I did a lot for you. I really helped you out with this pattern. So, when you are ready to go, let's go ahead and dive into what materials I used to make the old Hollywood blanket. This one's great, ah, I like this. The materials that I used for the old Hollywood blanket include the yarn, loops and threads, cozy wool. It's a size six weight, super bulky, super chunky yarn. 
This is the color fleece. I also used the same exact yarn but in the color goldenrod. Now depending on the size blanket that you plan on making will change the amount of yarn that you need to purchase. For me, my blanket that I made is 50 inches wide by 65 inches tall. I used 12 skeins of the fleece color and 7 skeins of the goldenrod color. That's what I used for my blanket. If you want to make a different size, please refer to the chart so you know exactly how much yarn you need to purchase of this exact skein if you're using the same materials that I am, or I will also include the different amounts of yards that you will need per color so that way you know how to purchase other skeins, other brands if you want to do so. If you have a wool allergy, you're allergic to wool and you cannot use this yarn, I totally understand. Feel free to substitute this yarn out for any yarn that you find plushy, squishy, comfy, some yarn that you would be really excited to make this blanket with. The only thing that I really ask you to check for and keep consistent is the size of the yarn. Please make sure whatever you substitute this yarn out for is also a size six weight, super bulky, super chunky yarn. That way you can still go about using my chart. You can still follow along with me with my instructions. If you choose to use a smaller yarn, such as a five, four weight, three weight yarn, the stitches will be smaller. Your blanket dimensions will be smaller and you are not going to get the same results that I do. So my only big ask is that you do, if you need to substitute yarn, substitute it out, but with the same size, the size six, super bulky, super chunky yarn. Okay, so the crochet hook that I used was a 15 millimeter crochet hook. Personally, I wanted to use a larger crochet hook with my larger yarn, so that way I would get that loose, plushy, squishy, drapey look to my stitches. I really want this blanket because this yarn is really soft when you squish it and when there's room for it to puff back up and allow it to be squished again. And so I wanted my stitches to be loose, bigger, so that way they could expand and then contract and have that squishy, cuddly aspect to them. The smaller your crochet hook will be, the smaller the stitches will be, the tighter the stitches will be. So take that into consideration if you cannot find a 15 millimeter crochet hook or you are wanting to use what you have on hand and you do not have a 15 millimeter crochet hook, it will affect the size of your stitches. It will make the stitches smaller, which will possibly make them tighter and more rigid and not so comfy cozy because the yarn won't be able to expand out as much as it could allowing it to have that squish factor, if that makes sense. Secondly, if you use a smaller crochet hook than I do, again, it will affect the dimensions of your project, the dimensions of your blanket, and it may result in your finished product, finished project being smaller than the ones that I specify in the chart. So be aware of that as well. Using the same crochet hook size and the same yarn size that I do will result in hopefully you getting as close as possible to the same dimensions that I say they will in the pattern. Next is the yarn needle tapestry needle. You can technically use a regular sized yarn needle tapestry needle as long as you can fit the super bulky, super chunky yarn through the eye. For me, it's a little challenging. It's doable, I can do it, but it's a little bit challenging because this yarn is so thick. So I recommend having a yarn needle or tapestry needle with a large eye to make it easier to use. And then last but not least, a pair of scissors. We're gonna be using the scissors for a couple different reasons. One, cutting one color to start another color with the color change, or when we are joining more yarn to the project, it will help us to get rid of those tails. All right, I will put links to everything you see here in both the description section and comment section below this video. So all you have to do is click on that link, purchase the item, and have it shipped directly to you out of ease and convenience so you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, if you have stuff on hand that you really want to use and you're really excited to do so, go ahead and get everything ready to go and let's get started making the old Hollywood blanket. Let's begin. We're going to start with our fleece color or the color that you want 
to begin the blanket with, the dominant color that will you'll see more of in the blanket if you're choosing a different color to play with. Start with a tail long enough for us to weave in the end at the end of the project. Create our slip knot. Attach our crochet hook. Awesome, we are ready to begin. All right, so we are using the crunch stitch for this pattern. The crunch stitch is worked in a multiple of two plus one. So go ahead and either use that to make whatever size blanket that you wanna make. Again, in the pattern, if you look in the pattern, I will tell you how many chains to chain depending on what blanket size that you want to make. And go ahead and just go with that. For me personally, with the size blanket that I'm making, I don't necessarily think my blanket hit an average size dimension. It's kind of like an oddball size dimension. Me, my blanket, I chained 77. So if you wanna do what I'm doing, that's fine. Feel free. Otherwise, if you have a specific blanket size in mind that you really wanna create, just refer to the pattern and how many chains I recommend that you make to make that blanket. All right, so for this video though, I am just doing a small swatch. That way I can get from row to row to row faster with you show you what to do in each row, show you how to color change and how to do the border in the least amount of time possible. So starting with a multiple of two plus one. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, Perfect. And once you get to your desired length, then plus one. So for me, for my little swatchy thing I'm making, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Great. All right, let's move on to row one. For row one, we are going to actually slip stitch in the third chain from our crochet hook. So counting our V stitches, one, two, three, slip stitch into that third chain. The skipped two chains actually do count as our first half double crochet stitch. So it does count as a stitch. The repeat pattern for row one is half double crochet, I'm going slow so that way it's working with bulky material here and then slip stitch. Right, and then half double crochet. And then slip stitch. Repeat this pattern all the way across for row one and I will meet you at the end of row one to show you what to do next. All right, at the end of row one, we are slip stitching into the very last stitch space. That will indicate to you that you've reached the end. It needs to be on a slip stitch, okay? If you end on a half double crochet stitch, then you probably did something wrong in within row one where you added maybe a half double crochet, then half double crochet, or a slip stitch and then slip stitch but for some reason the pattern didn't stick. So make sure you go backwards in row one, find where that didn't work out, and make sure that you end row one with a slip stitch. Okay, let's move on to row two. We start row two by chaining two. One, two. Turn our work. That chain two counts as our very first half double crochet stitch, and we'll actually take the space of the very first stitch space. What we are looking for now is the half double crochet stitch from the row below, and we will slip stitch on top of that stitch. Next stitch, half double crochet. And slip stitch on the next stitch, half double crochet. So the pattern stays the same. We are just ro uh, repeating or rotating half double crochet, then slip stitch, half double crochet, then slip stitch. The difference between row one and row two though, 
is with row two, we are referring to the row below and we are doing the opposite. So we are slip stitching on top of half double crochet stitches or making half double crochet stitches on top of slip stitches. It's the opposite there. And then just work your way across the row. I will be getting here very quickly. Okay, so at the end of row two, you have the slip stitch. So we're gonna half double crochet on top of that slip stitch. Great, and then we have our all our turning chains here at the very end. Now it's important because this turning chain did count as our very first half double crochet stitch. So because it counted as a stitch, we do need to add a stitch on top of it or in the top turning chain. So find the next chain, stick your finger in there if you have to, and slip stitch into that top turning chain. Now, if this is too hard, if you cannot find that turning chain, it's a struggle for you, it's okay if you just go ahead, ah, there we go, and slip stitch into the space between the slip stitch and the turning chain. That's fine, it's okay slip stitch. Either way, you want to make sure that you're ending every row with a slip stitch. Super important. Beginning every row with a chain two, skipping that first stitch, diving right into a slip stitch on top of a half double crochet, and then ending every row with a slip stitch. That's it guys, we're just repeating row two for the rest of this entire project. The big thing with this project though is the color changes and the joining new yarn to your project. So let me go ahead and actually take a second and show you how to join more yarn to your project. Because like I mentioned, for me personally, I used 12 skeins of this fleece color. So there was definitely a lot of joining happening in this project. So how I join my yarn to my project. Let me go ahead and get into the next row a little bit. That way I'm not joining at the end of a row because if that's important to you, if that's something that you really wanna do, that you always begin or end a row and join at the end of a row, join more yarn at the end of a row, then feel free to omit this section, this part. But for me, I don't, like to do that, I like to use my yarn to its fullest extent. That way I don't feel like I wasted anything. And that's actually also how I create my patterns. So if you do have a lot of yarn waste because you end the project at the end of a row, you might need to take that into consideration when purchasing yarn, get a little bit extra just in case. Okay, so chain two. At the end of every row, we will chain two. We will turn our work. That chain two counts as our first half double crochet stitch and takes that first stitch space. Slip stitch into the top of the half double crochet stitch and then half double crochet. Slip stitch, okay, I'm into the row a little bit. Let me show you how I join yarn. So we're gonna pretend that I'm running out of yarn. Oh no, I'm running out of yarn. <laughs> and I need to attach more yarn to my project so I can keep going. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I do the invisible knot trick, joining trick that I always use. I swear by it, I use it with all of my projects. If you've seen other videos of mine, you've probably seen this before. And I hope it helped. So, I'm running out of yarn. I grab a new skein of yarn. I have one strand going in one direction. This is the strand that's attached to my project. I have the other strand of the yarn that I'm joining going in the opposite direction. Now, it doesn't really matter if it goes like that. It, it doesn't matter which one goes which way, as long as one's going one direction, the other's going in the other direction. That's all that matters. Okay, bud them up next to each other so they are touching. Take one side with the little tail. Wrap the two yarns around two fingers, okay? 
take the little tail, go over the two yarns and between your two fingers so that way it's coming out towards your fingernail. Pinch that tail, remove your fingers and you have knot number one. Move over to the other side. Two fingers. Wrap the two yarns around the two fingers. Take the little tail, go over the two yarns between your fingers so it's coming out towards your fingernail. Pinch the tail, remove the fingers. Knot number two. Grab the two knots. Grab the yarn that is next to or attached to your project. Grab the yarn that is attached to your new yarn skein. Pull so those knots come in towards each other. Slide. And we have now formed an extremely strong knot that is not going anywhere. <laughs> it's amazing, I love it. And what's best is you can actually cut these tails right next to the knot and the knot does not come apart, it does not undo, it's, perm it's like per there permanently, how it's created. Super strong not going anywhere. So now when we move forward with our project, repeating half double crochet, then slip knot, or slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch. All right, I went past the knot join. Here it is, right here. I can see it because I'm pretty close by. Can you see it? Let me know in the comments. Can you see the knot? Can you see it? It camouflages in beautifully. I especially love using this technique when I'm using the same color yarn because it does, it camouflages in. And then I have nothing to come back and address, nothing to weave in. I can just keep going and not worry about it at all. I have less yarn waste left over at the end of my project, which means I can use more yarn yardage within my project and just keep going. So I love this, it's my go-to. And if it helps you, that is the best part of all. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to repeat this row two with the fleece color yarn for section one. Refer to the pattern, checking out the size blanket that you want to make to know how many rows you need to make before we do the color change. For me, I ended at row 31. That's where I ended. So if you're following along with me, I'm going to give you at least the first few sections of the blanket to give you enough information to know how much to move forward, but then the pattern is really going to be helpful for most people. Okay. So yes, complete uh, section one with the fleece color, however many rows you need to make, just repeating row two, and I will meet you at the end of that section to show you how I switch colors that way. Hopefully that helps you out. All right, I'll see you very soon, guys. Great, you are now ready for your color change to the next color. This is how I do it. Reach the end of your row. Cut enough yarn for you to weave in the end into the project. Yarn over that tail. Pull the tail through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off. Yes, I tie off the color. Flip it over because we are starting, we're just gonna continue working the whole row repeat. So I flip my row over, my work over. Grab color B. Starting with a tail long enough for me to weave in the end, creating my slip knot, attaching my crochet hook. Great. How I attach my new color to the project, I find the very first stitch space, insert my crochet hook, and slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch into the very first stitch space. 
yarn over, pull it through, and pull through the loop on your crochet hook. And this is purely just attaching the new color to the project. Now to begin the row, chain two, one, two. Remember the very first chain two counts as our first stitch. It's the first half double crochet stitch. So we will skip that first stitch space that we just slip stitched into and slip stitch into the next stitch. And just continue the pattern same way. Nothing changes. We literally just attached a new color. Okay. And that's it. That is how I attach or switch colors in my project. I just make sure I reach the end of the row that I have designated in the pattern. In the pattern, I have everything listed out, all the color changes, all the color change rows. So you know when you need to cut the yarn at the end of a row, slip stitch to attach the new color, then chain two and continue on. So go ahead, take a second, refer to the pattern for what rows you need to do your color changes. Get through the main body of your work and then come back and together we will make our single crochet border to finish everything off and close up our project. Just finished my very last row of my blanket or <laughs> we're going to pretend I did <laughs> for this demonstration. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to weave in the end. Yarn over the tail, pull through the loop on your hook for a tie off. Beautiful. Okay, so before we move on to the border of this blanket, weave in all of these ends, get them out of the way. Okay, so when you weave in your ends though, be very cautious, be very careful to keep color to color because if you intermix colors or even just get really close to the edge of a color, it's going to be very, very obvious. We don't want obvious. We want it to look as clean as possible. So make sure that when you weave in, really get into that color so that way it just camouflages in and hides. Let me go ahead and show you how I weave in my ends. That way you have kind of an example to go off of if you need one. If you have your own way, your own technique of weaving in your ends, then just do your own, do your own thing. So what I will do is I will insert my yarn needle into the stitches and actually go between yarn. I want my yarn fibers to cling to each other and prevent them from going anywhere. So I'll even go just, I'll still do a couple over unders of the different stitches, but every now and then I will go through. A yarn strand and then I'll go a little ways into the row and then double back and that is the technique that seems to work best for me so I'll see where my yarn came out of hop over that and go backwards towards the side of the project or the blanket by hopping over that first stitch I prevent undoing everything that I just did <laughs> There we go. And then as I remove my yarn needle, I'll come back and I will pull everything so that way it doesn't have that tensed up accordion kind of thing going on. I want everything to relax, the stitches to relax and look the way they should. Then I will grab my scissors and cut the yarn flush with the work. And that's it. Repeat for all of the tails, getting them all cleaned up and then come back and we will get that single crochet border put on this blanket and finish everything up. All of our ends are all cleaned up and we are ready to finish off this project. Grab your gold color, goldenrod, or color B if you're changing the colors completely. Okay, I'm looking at one of the corners of my blanket. Doesn't really matter where you begin starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in the ends at the end of the project, create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook, 
perfect slip stitch into the very first stitch of one of the corners. So like I said, doesn't matter which corner. Slip stitch. Chain one. We are ready to begin. So we are going to work one single crochet stitch in the same stitch we just slip stitched into. and then continue to make one single crochet stitch in every single stitch space all the way across the top of your blanket. Pause when you get to the first corner. I'll meet you in the first corner to show you how we get around the corner and then how we will work the side of the blanket. In corner number one, or that very last stitch space on the top of the blanket, we will make three single crochet stitches in that same stitch space. Now, why three? The first single crochet stitch that we make in this stitch space counts as the very last single crochet stitch for this side of the blanket. The second single crochet stitch that we are going to make will count as our turning stitch to help us smoothly make our way to the next side of the blanket. And the third single crochet stitch that we make will count as the very first stitch for the first row on this side of the blanket. Great. Now working this pattern, working this border on this pattern on the main body of the blanket, we are just making one single crochet stitch in the side of every single row all the way down doesn't matter which row we ended on because we either ended the row with a slip stitch or a we began the row with a half double crochet stitch. Either way, both stitches mean that the side of the row will get one single crochet stitch. So a good way to stay on track or stay on count with working the side of the blanket is to look at how many rows you made for your blanket. You should have that same number of stitches worked on the side of the blanket. So that'll help keep you on track. Remember, that third single crochet stitch we just made counts as our very first single crochet stitch and that first row that we just worked. So row one, the next be the second row down, one single crochet, next row down, one single crochet, if you're having trouble deciphering what's a row, <laughs> totally get it. Find the diagonal at the end of the row. You're going to make one single crochet stitch before that diagonal and one single crochet stitch after that diagonal. And then you'll find the next diagonal. One single crochet stitch before, one single crochet stitch after. Now, don't get these two confused. It'd be basically single crochet, single crochet. Then Diagonal, single crochet, single crochet. Diagonal, single crochet, single crochet. Diagonal. Hopefully one of those mini techniques will help you to figure out how many stitches or where to place your stitches you will need in the side of your row. I will meet you at the next corner to show you how we will work the bottom of the blanket. Okay, we've just reached the next corner what you will see are all of these loops on the bottom. That was from our foundation row chain. We do not want to work in the foundation row chain because we did not count the foundation row chain as a row. So by working in the foundation row chain here at the very end, it may cause some distortion of the blanket. It may just look a little funny. If you want to, you can, it's your blanket. But what I'm going to do guys is I'm actually going to be working my three corner stitches in the side of the first row that I made. So not that first chain from the foundation row, but the first row. So one, two, and three. Turning my blanket, working along the bottom. Now to work along the bottom where there's a foundation row, again, we're not working into the foundation row, we're working into row one. So finding 
your stitches is right here. You're actually going to go into the work. So here, go in. One way of knowing that you're staying on track with your stitches is to know how many stitches did you have in row one. You're going to want that same number of stitches in the border. Okay, if you look, I'm literally like coming into the work and I'm seeing this one stitch and the two spaces between it. Hopefully you can see that. I'm entering into row one. That's how my stitches are looking right there. Great, and that very last stitch, going to make three single crochets. One, two, three, turning our work, working up the other side the exact same way we worked the other side. Remember, keeping the count of how many rows you made for your blanket, also looking at those diagonals here and knowing there are two single crochets between each diagonal. Okay, at the end of our blanket, you'll see that there is already a single crochet stitch in that last stitch space because that is also the very first stitch space that we started the border. So I'm going to go ahead and make two single crochet stitches in that last stitch space because two plus the one that's already in there equals the three that we need for our corner. So one, two, slip stitch into the top of that very first single crochet stitch to close the border. Finding that very first stitch and slip stitch. Grab your scissors. Cut a tail long enough for you to weave in that end. Yarn over, pull through for a tie off. Guys, your blanket's done. Oh, feel it. Oh my gosh. I am just absolutely in love with this yarn. I'm in love with this stitch. I'm in love with how the crochet hook worked with the yarn and made it so plushy and comfy and cozy. I hope you love it as much as I do and hope you had just as much fun. I really like this video. I get to cuddle up with a blanket <laughs> for, for the whole intro and conclusion and all that fun. So I get to cuddle and I like that. <laughs> So what did you think of the old Hollywood blanket? What did you think of the process to create it? How did you feel about the color changes? Let me know in the comment section below if you're going to keep the colors and keep this beautiful gold and cream vibe that I have going on here, or if you wanna change it up and change your colors and do something different. I'd like to know. <laughs> if you like this video, do all the things, guys. Like, subscribe, check out my membership program because there's a couple levels there that I think you'll really enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I have so many other fun, easy crochet blanket videos that you've gotta check out. I made a playlist for you right here. Check out all of my blanket videos. See if there's any other blanket videos that I've created that inspire you or excite you or make you want to crochet. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for crocheting with me, hanging out with me. I always love crocheting with you. I will see you with the next one. Bye.